I wonder what Zushi's up to. Oh, I miss Zushi. Can you imagine Zushi living in this world? The world of this arc of Hunter x Hunter? He's not ready. He's it's not, not the path for him. Hunter x Hunter episode 53, Fake X and X Psyche. The fake is that Krolo's dead. Look at their cute little umbrellas. All right, <laughs> sure. These mafia henchmen, man, they just do not have a chance. Oh, oh, that's... Oh, there he is. I was wondering. But it's kind of confusing to me because isn't he a member of the Phantom Troop? Yet his father's killing the Phantom Troop. Is he rogue? Like, against the family? Or is there a larger plan here? Well, it is a huge relief, I guess. It's highly suspicious. That's the thing with fortunes, though. They're, they're open to interpretation. They're ascending stairs. What goes up must come down. That's a fat lie. Oh, this is uh, Shalnark. Yes, if you see it on TV, it must be real. They've been infiltrated. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there it is. So he's against. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You know, these pins. What is going on? Oh no. Oh no, so wait, 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 wait. So he was hired by Krolo? Simultaneous with his father being hired to kill Krolo? I mean, a job's a job, I guess. I guess not mutually exclusive. They can do both as a family. Damn, playing all sides. She scares the hell out of me. And they're now dead. This is a surprising development. I'll give it to the narrator. I mean, he, he might, because that's his MO. It's so complex. This turned awfully pleasant. He was deliberately holding back? Man, this was like a faded matchup. There's gonna be a third time, maybe. He wasn't even trying to kill them, he was just trying to get their abilities. Amazing. Did they actually call a legit ambulance? There was something kind of romantic about their encounter, Krolo and Neon. It was one of the best dates I've ever seen in anime, and I've like watched romance anime. Everyone had a great time today, except for the mafia henchmen. <laughs> they had a very bad time. Oh, there's Ahsoka. What are you? So that's what it is. That's very interesting. My boy has a crush? This is just the end of the Mafia, I guess. These are the last living members. The Mafia death arc. Phantom Troop <laughs> cleaning up York New City, I guess. Is this their philanthropy? <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, everything's fine. Everything went perfectly. <laughs> mm -hmm. Goodbye. Speaking of dates, <laughs> they're on a murder date. Wire it into this account. They too are running side quests. Colin would fit right in with them. My god. 
Okay. And they get the treasure. They just get everything. They get the money and the treasure and the murder and the fun. And they get to live. Silva Zoldic is gone. Everything coming up Phantom Troop. So far, there's still Kuripika and Hisoka. <laughs> Yeah. Kurpika's intelligence saving him. Oh no, but he fell for it. He thinks his chance has been robbed, but I feel like he's gonna figure that out pretty quickly. Yeah, these henchmen are haters for no reason. You know, I, I like would not be shocked if Kurapika just m is murdering people. <laughs> or that, yeah. It's a different Kurapika. <laughs> Robbing him of bloodlust. Oh, they made a double. Double of all of them. What a... Like, assuming... Well, Kurapika does believe this. What a rush of emotions. How do you feel? That's your goal, right? But bloodlust unsatisfied. Oh, just to put the knife into it. Oh. Are we about to fly up the handle? You could use a gentle melody right now. Whoa, it would be just insult to injury if Kubika falls victim to this scam on top of everything. It's just humiliating. This is humiliating, bidding on your own people's eyes. Maybe you should have established an upper limit there, but oh well. Mafia ends one war and begins another in the same night. <laughs> Me, when I'm rationalizing big purchases, it all just supports the local economy. But for real though, it's for Neon. What greater cause is there? Making my spoiled daughter happy. Yeah, yeah. look at her. Look at her. Yeah. Remember why you do this. And also, I love her. Dark. Krolo could just steal her. <laughs> This got real creepy real fast. I'm writing fanfics now, but like Krolo could just yoink her from this life. You could tell she was ready to go. Then they have fortune telling as well. This is brutal. This is this is so brutal. Kurupika like literally being looked at in a sense by his dead ancestors. Is this what they would have wanted? Did you not just like become? Ugh, I don't know. It's messy. What a yeah. Wow. Oh, and all the energy just drained. This is not a moment of reckoning. You tell yourself the goal will be worth it. You tell yourself you get the thing you wanted. And I just sacrifice a little bit, just a little bit, and I get what I want. And then I always have the knowledge that I got what I wanted. But like, what did you trade? In this case, Kurpika did not get the, the bloodlust satisfaction. But even if he had, it, it, there would still be this moment. Might even be worse. In a key sense, it's a distraction. I have noticed this time and time again in myself, not with murder. But like, in the moments where I'm most conflicted about what I'm doing, when I kind of lose the path a little bit, Bit. I'm not really sure how to advance my life or get what I want. I think that's when I'm most vulnerable to like the shiny things. It's really tempting to go into the kind of uh, the, the emotional pleasure, whether that's like falling in love or losing yourself in partying. And there's a very powerful way your mind can write that to make sense of it, where it's like that kind of effort energy. There's some like coolness, some real power in that thought, but like you, you pay for it. You pay for it eventually. As I mentioned a few episodes ago, I just came back from KL, partly inspired by Jujutsu Kaisen. And I had a little bit of a like romance that consumed me a little more than was comfortable like I felt myself kind of being swept up in it it's like no coincidence that the timing of it happened to coincide with like a, a lot of questions I'm facing about like where to live and what endeavors I should be pursuing the real high road challenges of life are so difficult it makes you forge something out of nothing it's difficult by necessity almost because in a way you sort of pay for growth with challenge subconsciously my brain is thinking well I could fight this brutal fight where there's no great outcome guaranteed where I have to use a thousand percent of my energy and focus willpower and discipline or I can let myself slip into this sweet love affair. <laughs> this for Kuripika is a lot darker. It's such a central part of his identity. This revenge thing, it's why he got the hunter license. It's been his stated purpose. And he's so much more, like we can see that, but Kuripika might not. What is Kuripika without the revenge? What is Kuripika without the Phantom Troop? Because of that scale between temptation and difficulty, it's not that hard to slip into that lane where you're starting to compromise the, the stuff you should be doing, the person you should be becoming for the thing that grips you emotionally. And then, you know, you have a moment of reckoning when you look at what you've made. 
and you're holding the eyes of your your dead ancestors. Oh man, it's not not great. And you have to carry it in a gift wrap box. Bro, is this where Kurpika murders? Oh, but the the pact. Wait, Kurpika can murder, but just can't use the chains. Yeah, Kurpika might murder. Like it wouldn't shock me. I feel like he's walking a very thin line. That's what I'm saying, yeah. This is a credible threat. I also don't think Kurapika has a lot of, like, self-preservation instincts right now. Wow, you are whack. <laughs> You're so whack. You just got knocked down by a threat. That's what Lyra is up to. Getting drunk. They're not, but okay. Although, like, come on, man. Come on. This is Hunter Hunter. We can murder people. We can trail people. We can fight in battle tournaments. We can get a Hunter license, which is almost certain death. But alcohol, no, no. That would be crossing the line. The unspeakable horrors of underage drinking. Surely there is no greater crime. Let the kids drink. Oh, yeah. I keep forgetting. He's not 45. It did? I missed the antique connection. Oh, the side thing. I totally missed that. That's really cool. Although Gon had already done that in the Hunter exam arc. I thought that was the influence. <laughs> What's the con? The con is learning. Sort of. That's what we all thought, but... I'm not sure what Kurapika has can be transferred or taught, except for the, the pack thing. That would be useful. All's well that ends well. Neon is happy. Ugh. Except for Kurapika. She's going to be satisfied for all of 15 seconds and then she's going to desire something else or run away with Krolo. Melody reading heartbeats. Not that it, you really need to in this case or ever. Fate worse than fighting the Phantom Troop. Gee, something tells me Kurapika is not, not doing well. Optimistically, maybe this is lucky for Kurapika, having this moment of reflection, even though the assumptions are wrong. You gotta live in the space, man. Like, it was never gonna be it. Not completely. I need... Yeah, call... Yeah, hang out with your friends. This is, like, so, so critical. This feels encouraging. Yeah, they went through them like some kind of balloons. Everyone's fooled. Um, yeah, the music's playing, but this does not feel triumphant for once. <laughs> you don't say. I mean, come on. This is, this is insane. Lost in the void. What is next for Kurapika? I mean, it's a fake out. The Venom Troop is alive. I almost think it's worse, though, because Kurapika had this moment to experience the, the emptiness that was destined to come. It's a critical moment because finding out the Phantom Troop is still alive would be a relief greater than the sadness temporarily. Like, it could plunge him further into this path. Or, if he's paying attention, he could realize that this is not really the answer. Which again, it's kind of weird. It's not necessarily not fighting the Phantom Troop. Like, you can go up to the Phantom Troop. It's more like the emotional obsession, the loss of control, being a victim of yourself and your own emotions. There's a way in which the, the assessment of whether a course of action is good or bad can change entirely based on the motivation and the approach. Some things are just wrong, right? But a lot of things, it, it like depends on what it's doing for you, how it serves the world. Is it building? Is it constructive? Is it additive in service? Or is it like the base instinct doing the talking, ignoring the sacrifices and costs and devastation that it might cause? You know what's the most profound feeling I, I feel for Kurupika right now? It's loneliness. It goes back to how I was saying often 
in the moments of compromise or descending into, you know, dark emotional states and courses of action it goes hand in hand with distancing yourself from people who really care about you and the people you most need because you know you can't get away with the things you're trying to get away with if you have eyes you care about on you. It's no accident that Kuripika hasn't seen Gonklu and Leorio for a long time. Some of it's circumstantial, but that's not the whole story. Melody's trying, but like, I don't know. I feel like the, the respect and mutual consideration hasn't been established bilaterally enough for it to be significant. It's especially poignant for Kuripika because we've seen he's so, so honorable and principled in other situations. He's really lost himself in this. And this is so hard. It's so difficult. It's a constant struggle for me. In my experience, you always lose trading principles or your values or what your conscience is telling you is right for some kind of emotional gratification that you know to be dicey. You almost always end up with less despite what you convince yourself. It comes back again, like a lot of things in the show, to questions of what's actually valuable. Like if you could go anywhere, do anything, if you have access to the whole world and you have a ton of potential and talent and ability, what do you do? What do you become? It's pretty clear to me that it's not the material, which is not to say the material is not important or worth pursuing, but not at the cost of your relationship with yourself and your integrity. Because it's, it's from that, that all good things flow probably. But that hierarchy of needs thing is big. You know, if you have a deficiency in an area, it will pull you. It's like a drug. Gone, Kalua, Honor Encyclopedia. What are you? Right, no living copies. We learned that. He also has the ability to look like two Pokemon at the same time. Jinx and Tangela had a baby. I think the next mission is putting down the antiques for a minute and rescuing Kurapika. Like, we need to get into his life again. We'd be much stronger together. Depending on the strength of their relationship, and I guess how open Kurapika is to it, how much it means to him, there's a way in which thinking about this won't really do much good, but being with people he holds in high esteem, like Gon and Klua, would kind of eliminate the need for the, the question or problem in the first place, to a significant degree at least. So many times I'm agonizing over something, you know, I'm going through a weird period of conflict and then I hang out with my closest friends and it's like the problem isn't solved but it doesn't seem that important anymore. It like grounds me to things that are bigger, if that makes sense. There's such a drift, you know, like as much as I want to believe I'm just fully self-sufficient and self-generating source of stability and, <laughs> and goodness, I am kind of a sponge. I need to anchor myself to things that are better than me or good. This is the Kuripika isolation arc. And you know there's a path here where Gon, Kalua, uh, Leorio, and Kuripika pursue the Phantom Troop together, but I feel like it would, it would be tangibly different different in tone and emotional health. Kuripika's stated thing is like, well, I don't want to involve the kids. And that's reasonable and honorable to an extent, of course. But Gon and Klu are no fools and they're no slouches. Like they can keep up. They want to be there. They're making the choice with eyes open. And it's not selfish to ask for help. In fact, if people want to give help willingly, if their, their hearts are there 100% genuinely, you give people an opportunity and a gift by letting them in and letting them be of service to you. Feeling like you're giving to people you care about is like one of the highest things there is in life, I think. To think I don't want to let them in because I don't want to burden them or be in debt to them or cause them any any strain in their efforts to help me, in an odd way, is kind of selfish. Assuming the people are good enough and the quality of friendship is good enough. Yeah.